Movements, Space and Motions. For the study of seismic activity, it is necessary to do some repetition of basic principles which have been developed in Book 3. The space is divided into subselenium and superselenium plays. The four bodies that are in the sublunar field where we live are fire, air, water and land. Fire occupies the highest position and land the lowest. Air is close to fire, while water is close to land. All the elements of the sublunar place potentially contain the other elements within them. The sublunar field is the atmosphere and consists of two kinds of basic layers. The lower region, which is the homosphere associated with water and the upper, the heterosphere, where ionization occurs, which is a type of fire. The nature of the world is continuous and is affected by the dynamics of the direction of motion of the superlunar place. The superlunar field consists of ether, performs a circular motion and surrounds the sublunar field, creating all the necessary electromagnetic conditions. This movement also affects the upper layers of the ionosphere, which also moves with currents in the same direction, rotating with magnetic north as its center, creating currents of ionized air at these levels. Movement in the sublunar region in the atmosphere is according to density, with the thinner going up and the dense going down. In the ionosphere, the gases are in layers, while from the stratosphere and below, the heavier gases are mixed. Winds. After the elements of nature and the separation of the atmosphere for a complete understanding of earthquakes, we will also refer to the winds. In the air, there are two types of vapors caused by the earth, the dry and the wet, where they are inconcentrated as there is no dry without the wet and vice versa. Wet evaporation is the principle and responsible for rains and the rainwater cycle, while dry evaporation is the cause and natural element for all winds. So the air, having a dry and moist phase, is sometimes moist and sometimes dry. As these fumes are continuously produced, clouds and winds are manifested according to the seasons. Sometimes wet steam evaporization prevails and sometimes dry and sometimes smoke evaporization. So we have years that are rainy and wet, but also dry years with winds, either locally or on a larger scale. It is possible that wet evaporization prevails in one area and dry evaporation prevails in an adjacent area, which causes locality in the phenomena. So when the rain forms, the wind stops, while after the rain it starts again more strongly. These phenomena cause the winds to be mainly north or south due to the movement of the sun from east to west. When the sun approaches, evaporation of moisture is caused, while when it leaves, rains and storms occur.
wind movement is caused from top to bottom. As mentioned, the superlunar place moves in the direction of the etheric field in a circle. The ionosphere in the sublunar locus, specifically its upper limit, touches the superlunar area and takes a component of this motion. In combination with the position of the Moon and the Sun at any moment, concentrations and currents of the noble gases and hydrogen that exist there are created. This creates the so-called atmospheric pressure from the ionosphere in the lower layers and is the basic principle of the winds in the lower layer of the atmosphere, in the troposphere and occurs before the winds are felt or manifested. At the same time, vapors from the Earth, whether dry or wet, also make their upper cycle in phases. All of the above contribute to the fact that the winds are in a mostly oblique direction and not from north to south or the opposite. In the same way that a river is formed, a wind is formed by the combination of many dry phase vapors. That is why where they start they are weak, while when they advance they blow stronger. The sun sometimes stops and sometimes stirs up the winds and the rains. When the fumes are few with its heat, it neutralizes them and breaks them up. It also causes a new vaporization by drying the earth first, accumulated great secretion. So, with the speed of drying, the sun prevents their formation. Depending on the geographical location of each place and the season, in combination with the atmospheric pressure they are caused from above, corresponding percentages of wet and dry vapors are created. These cause rains and winds, respectively, in individual areas, while neighboring ones can come into contact, causing the corresponding weather phenomena. Atmospheric pressure As we said, the atmospheric pressure in the troposphere is caused by the pressure from the upper layers of the atmosphere, a phenomenon that starts from the ionosphere, where it touches the upper side, the superlunar place. There we have currents of gases, something we also observe looking at northern Stella. The integrated movement of these currents in the ionosphere is caused by components of movements due to A in the circular movement of the transestial etheric field from above, the so-called cosmic universal with limits, etheric movement. B in the upward movement of the vapors, of the vapors of all noble and inflammable gases where they are caused by the surface of the Earth. They pierce the rest of the lower layers until they reach the highest depending on their composition. C. The parts of the ionosphere that are ionized by the sun are heated and decompressed. While where the range of the sun's electromagnetic field stops, there is a drop in temperature and an increase in pressure. There is a kind of expansion contraction of the gases there due to the existence of the Sun and it has dynamics due to its periodic movement. D. The Moon causes the opposite change to that of the Sun but to a lesser extent. The electromagnetic field that creates the Moon itself discharges and decompresses the ionized parts of the ionosphere. The phases of the Moon play an important role. We have more influence of alignments rather than squares which, as we have seen, has to do with the Sun-Moon position relationship. All this suggests that the pressure is exerted from the upper layers of the ionosphere downwards. 
Thus, barometric highs or barometric lows are created in the troposphere by regions which affect the weather phenomena that occur on the surface of the Earth. Pulsating electromagnetic field. The pulsating electromagnetic field that creates the sun and moon affects the waters of the seas as we have seen in the tides. It affects the air in the same way. We observe this particularly in caves. Sometimes the wind comes from under the earth to the outside and sometimes from the outside to the inside making the cave in a sense whistle. Where does this wind come from and where does it go? The earth was stolen from beneath our feet. We became a diaspora, an unnamed nation of bastards. We channeled our roots to the pulse of light deep within the galaxies of our minds. Our breath was the sky, Our dreams were water. We claimed the wilderness. We recognized one another. The truth is that the Earth has many internal cavities in the soil and subsoil, which contain enormous amounts of air, both in the dry and in the wet evaporization phase. Depending on the atmospheric pressure conditions, which change periodically, vertical currents are created, sometimes from below upwards as we are used to thinking of vapors, and sometimes from the surface of the Earth towards the subsoil, as in the case of low tide. So these vapors that circulate like vertical currents and alternate direction can be dry as well as wet. When dry vapors all the way up create winds due to atmospheric pressure, these dry ones which are from elements of fire rise into the ionosphere and create celestial phenomena. When liquid vapors arise, clouds are created and we have the rainwater cycle. When dry fumes pan downwards, collect and accumulate in underground cavities with the risk of their saturation and their ignition. When liquid vapors are all descend, They accumulate in pits in the subsoil with the risk of explosion due to their compression and friction with the dry vapors, the possible underground water and the relief of the soil cavity. Also, as we have seen in Book 4, it affects plants, fish and animals in general. The moon from new to full favors the upper course, while from full to new the lower. The passage of the sun from the meridian of each part favors the upper course, while the passage of the moon from the meridian favors the lower one. So we see that there is an inextricable relationship between the pulsating cosmic electromagnetic field and the atmospheric pressure and the creation of winds. So everyone would wonder what the winds, atmospheric pressure and the pulsating electromagnetic field we are in have to do with earthquakes. 
As we will see in this chapter, earthquakes are a consequence of weather phenomena which in turn are due to changes in the atmospheric pressure, the existence of a wet and dry phase of the air, but also the ability of the earth to inhale and exhale. The parallelism of celestial phenomena with earthquakes will also be understood, which at first seems invalid. There are cases of an earthquake that, with the creation of a chasm, we have a call for water, or in other cases we have a call for lava and the earthquake is combined with a volcanic activity. All this, as we will see, has to do with the type and nature of the underground accumulated saturated fumes, dry or wet. Volcanoes, as we will see, are a part of the chapter of earthquakes and have the same causes of creation. We could say that volcanoes are also indirect results of meteorological phenomena. We claim the wilderness. The close and continuous relationship of all elements, earth, water, air, fire, at all levels, subsoil, soil, surface of the earth, troposphere, stratosphere, ionosphere, etheric field, will also be understood. Dry and wet fumes. In the lower part of the sublunar place, in the homosphere, where all the components of the air are homogeneously mixed, the air is moist and cold and has an inseparable relationship with the element of water as all weather phenomena occur there. The air in the troposphere has a percentage of dry and moist evaporation in it. The atmospheric pressure, known to us from the weather reports, is defined in this layer by the upper layer of the ionosphere, which sometimes compresses it a little and sometimes much more. In the upper part of the heterosphere, where the noble gases together with atomic oxygen and hydrogen are stacked in layers, according to the density of each gas, the air is hot and dry, having the element of fire in it. There we have the celestial phenomena. So, in one area we have the cycle of water with the weather phenomena, while in the higher run the cycle of vapors where we have the celestial phenomena such as comets, meteors, explosions, shooting stars, black explosions, the band of the galaxy at the galactic equator and the north auroras, all of which occur in the high layers of the ionosphere in the upper part of the sublunar region, as we have said in detail in the third issue. So these fumes are emitted from the Earth either by natural or man-made factors. They are divided into wet ones when it comes to water and the water cycle, while dry ones when it comes to fumes of flammable materials, gasoline, oil, etc., which make a larger cycle, the cycle of dry fumes, as they reach the limits of the sub place with the ether. But they don't just make this cycle, nor do they evaporate all the time.
The Breath of the Earth The winds that blow below and the vapors brought to the surface of the Earth by the ground are directly affected by changes in the electromagnetic field that affect the atmospheric pressure and temperature just as water is in the case of the tides which we discussed at length in Book 4. They change direction and sometimes go up and sometimes down. Since the porous earth has cavities below and creates negative pressure by phases in the air of the Earth's surface, just as it happens in the tide phenomenon with the waters. Exhalation phase We have low atmospheric pressure and evaporation of water vapor and fumes upwards towards the troposphere if it is vapor water or towards the ionosphere if there are gases from flammable materials. Inhalation phase. We have high atmospheric pressure and evaporation of dry and wet fumes, water vapor and fumes from flammable materials downward towards the subsoil. Underground cycle of fumes. As we saw in the third issue, there is also the underground water cycle in addition to the well-known one that we all know. This is also the case with fumes, dry or wet, which also make an underground cycle. Fumes generally occur when we have solar radiation and generally heat, while at night and in a cold environment they seem to stop. They don't actually stop, but change direction, going underground. 1. There is high atmospheric pressure conditions. The winds and any evaporation are directed downwards since we are in the inhalation phase. 2. Fumes from the Earth's surface flow into the Earth's interior through the pores in the soil. 3. Due to negative pressure, the fumes are directed from the ground to the subsoil where they are concentrated under pressure in pits. 4. The fumes are now concentrated in the underground pits and depending on their composition and density, they form an unsaturated mixture under pressure. 5. In cases where the mixture becomes saturated, we have a strong explosion and ignition of the vapor of fume gas in huge pressure and temperature. 6. After the gases have exploded and expanded, they first flow out of the escape port or ports from the ground to the Earth's surface, followed by the molten subsoil material lava if the explosion was from dry fumes or by water if the evaporations were liquid. 7. In the case of a strong explosion, we have a collapse of the underground pits and a disturbance which is transmitted upwards to be felt on the ground as an earthquake. As we have said, the Earth is a living organism that breathes in and out due to the pulsating electromagnetic field under its influence, which is perceived by the phenomenon of tides and ebbs. In the same way, the vapors, whether dry or wet, occur alternately upwards and downwards periodically. Earthquakes, seismic activity. Fumes, dry and wet ones directed downwards towards the subsoil, are responsible for earthquakes and seismic activity. As the subsoil is spongy and depending on the area, there are small or larger cavities which can accumulate large masses of dry as well as wet fumes. As conditions at the surface of the Earth favor inhalation of fumes from the surface or the ground to the subsoil, 
there is a possibility that more fumes will enter into a cavity, causing the unsaturated mixture of gases there to become saturated. In this case, there is explosion and ignition with the presence of monoatomic oxygen, just as is done with celestial phenomena in the ionosphere. These explosions change the shape of the pit in the subsoil, as a result of which the ground transfers vibration and shakes and we feel the earthquake on the surface of the Earth. Earthquakes are also caused by wet fumes, but mainly by dry ones. If water gushes out after the earthquake, then it goes from liquid fumes, saturated trapped moisture with air in the subsoil that has exploded. Earthquakes that combined with heat emission and volcanic activity have occurred due to entrapment of saturated dry vapors in the subsoil, flammable gases under pressure that ignited, released, created high temperatures, melted other elements of the subsoil, and soil making all this material lava change the form of the subsoil, making the soil on the surface to tremble. The land, the soil, by its nature is dry in itself. Because of the rains, a lot of moisture is stored inside it and then due to the heating from the sun, we have the production of many gases both outside on the surface and inside the ground. These gases sometimes flow outward from the ground and sometimes inward towards the subsoil periodically, which depends on the temperature and the radiation or not of the sun and the moon and on the atmospheric pressure defined by the ionosphere in the lower layer of troposphere. The influx of vapors from the surface and from the ground to the subsoil is the cause of earthquakes. Saturated dry fumes cause ignition and fire. Fire, when accompanied by gas, becomes a flame and moves quickly. So we have an extensive explosion in a large part of the underground which causes the ground above to shake and move or even give way as a result we feel the earthquake on the surface of the earth. Seismic areas and favorable conditions. Areas with sea currents, with spongy soils and narrow cavernous places in their subsoil with underground grooves have a higher probability of a larger earthquake. Spots with spongy subsoils know many earthquakes in seasons of no rain or a lot of rain, spring and autumn, as summer due to heat and drought and winter due to ice are periods of calm. During periods of heavy rain, there is a lot of compressive force in a small space inside the subsoil. The water takes up a lot of space and does not leave the necessary space for the incoming air, which eventually exhales from the subsoil violently, either under ignition, when it comes to dry fumigation, or with moisture if it is liquid. When warm vapors flow into the soil, the outflow of air due to the moisture creates condensation and cold. Depending on the size of the cloud of fumes, quantitatively on its qualitative composition, and on the relief and shape of the subsoil and cavities, we have strong or milder inditions, explosions of this cloud underground, and therefore strong or mild earthquakes. Types of vibrations. Depending on the way we have the accumulation of fumes underground, we have different types of vibrations during their combustion. When this gaseous stream is large and wide, when it ignites there is a horizontal vibration which is more frequent, while in areas where we had storage of the fumes in depth, we have a vertical vibration. In areas where the incoming wind with the fumes has difficulty passing and does not find a way out, we have greater vibrations. Mm -hmm. 
duration of seismic activity. An earthquake does not stop immediately, but the phenomenon is prolonged with aftershocks for about 40 days and up to two years. This is because the source that gave the vapors dry or wet and gave the impetus to the wind there could not consume all its matter at once. Until all the remains of this matter are consumed, the vibrations continue to decrease. The locality of the earthquakes depends on the subsoil space available for the burning gas to escape. Summary In other words, the cause of earthquakes is the same that causes comets and meteorites. The dry vapors with low atmospheric pressure and when the wind helps them, rise to the ionosphere and after being compressed, descend and ignite in a diagonally downward direction as a composite of the straight motion due to density and rarefaction up-down and its tangent circular orbit of ionospheric gas currents which currents are created due to the contact of the upper layer of the ionosphere with a superlunar locus that rotates creating the electromagnetic field below. When the wind does not help the vapors to rise and combined with high atmospheric pressure, it pushes them through the porous soil downwards towards the subsoil. There they sometimes condense and ignite. We would finally say that all these phenomena, comets, shooting stars, meteors, celestial colored flares, black or blue flares like gaps on the sky, the intensity and undulations of the light of the aurora borealis, seismic vibrations, landslides and volcanoes are purely meteorological phenomena. These phenomena depend on the atmospheric pressure, the temperature, the direction and temperature of the winds, their percentages of wet and dry vapors in the air and the morphology of the ground relief and the subsoil. Their predication is possible especially with the modern means of collecting the above data. Also, the study of geology with the study of the Moon is possible and offers us a lot of information in relation to the soils and their morphology as well as the qualitative composition of the subsoil by region. The atmospheric pressure exerted by the ionosphere on the lower layers of the atmosphere acts as a lever for the presence of the above phenomena. It depends on the intensity of the electromagnetic field in relation to the position of the Sun and the Moon on the upper level, which we saw how it works analytically in the tides chapter. As we saw in the fourth book, The Tides, where we have the natural respiration of the Earth in relation to the water, so here we have the natural respiration of the Earth in relation to the gases. The phenomena we saw are therefore the results of this operation and are inevitable. Volcanoes, volcanic activity. The temperatures that develop mainly in the dry fumes when they are trapped and ignited in the subsoil are very high any form of fire or lava from the subsoil is due to this phenomenon as the flame of vaporization burns materials from the subsoil according to its composition and alters its texture. If conditions permit, this entire mass of gases is released first, followed by a mixture with molten subsoil materials 
which were melted by the explosion of the drop drive humication gas under pressure in the subsoil in the space it occupied. In other words, lava does not exist everywhere under the subsoil. It is simply created in places and at times in candidate parts of the subsoil that meet the conditions of accumulation, compression and saturation of dry vapors from the ground or from the surface of the earth. Air is a thin fluid element and escapes more easily. After the initial expansion of the compressed flammable gas passing through anode passages to the surface, the decompression of the molten solid elements that used to heat turned into a liquid, what we call lava, follows. The composition of the lava has to do with the elements of the subsoil in question. Some places accumulate for a very long time many more chances for the conditions for the concentration of flammable gases to occur in their subsoil due to its geological form, its composition, the geographical position of the point, gas currents and atmospheric pressures in the area, etc. Those are places where volcanoes were created and are still being created. No lithospheric plates. According to what we saw in the chapter of Pangaea and also in the chapter of earthquakes and volcanoes, tectonic plates do not exist. Pangaea did not move and is Terra Vista. About 12,000 years ago, it was a single huge continent with all kinds of climates. The ground of the Earth is stable and uniform, without lava from underground except the places that the lava created as we saw. The changes that occur are from floods and earthquakes, landslides and the rise or fall of the sea level and all that these phenomena bring with them. Earthquakes, as we said, are caused by the underground cycle of dry or wet vapors. The points where they are marked as boundaries of the lithospheric plates and our candidate places for earthquakes are nothing more than subterranean zones of the subsoil where there are large cavities and also their climate and geographical position readily permit the inflow and great accumulation of dry and moist vapors inside them. Moon and weather predictions. Let us mention here that these changes in atmospheric pressure each time cause a different predisposition of the vapors inside the Earth, which is recorded in the image of the Moon each time as we observe it. On the one hand, it is the temperature and the dryness or humidity of the atmosphere that affects this event but it is also the predisposition of the subterranean vapors, dry or wet, that contribute to the final image of the Moon in terms of color shade. We have observed summer full moons to be more reddish and yellowish, while winter ones are whiter or towards blue. The spectrum of visible frequencies goes towards the red when dry vapors predominate, causing winds, draw and heat. When wet prevails, blues and purples prevail, which are combined with precipitation and humidity with lower temperatures. When we have frost, none prevails and so the moon appears brighter and whiter. So we understand that by looking at this thing, we can make weather predictions for the upcoming weather by predicting rainy weather, humidity, winds, drought, cold, heat.
thunders and lightnings. These phenomena have the same origin. The vapors, as we said in the chapter on winds and earthquakes, have a dual nature, the wet and the dry phase where they exist in combination. Condensation of this causes a cloud. As the heat rises upward, there is an amount of dry vapor that is trapped as the air cools and is expelled when it meets the clouds. As these dry vapors are released, they fall violently into neighboring clouds and thunder is produced. This sound is produced just like the sound of a flame, where the vapor after being compressed is brought to the flame and the wood crackles or dries. There is a wide variety of thunder sounds due to the varying size of the clouds and the gaps between the clouds. The wind of dry vapors expelled in this way undergoes, in condensants, a phenomenon we call lightning. It occurs after the crash and after the thunder, but appears first as the thunder comes more slowly to our ears, traveling at the speed of sound. In other words, we see that it is the same natural substance, the dry vapors, which when they are on the surface of the ground and flow in a certain way are wind, when they are on the ground and in the subsoil in another way, they cause earthquakes, and finally when they are in the clouds, as these clouds gather and condense into water, the dry vapor changes and breaks up as it is ejected, causing thunder and eventually lightning. Windstorms, turbines, hurricanes. When we have a secretion of the dry vapor in small quantities, it diffuses here and there, and when it spreads rapidly, it is thin and causes thunder and lightning. If it is solid and dense, a stormy wind is caused, which is violent with the speed of emission of the dry vapors creating the force of this wind. Since both phases are present in the air, when either of them starts to activate, the one in redundancy is emitted by it. If the wet phase prevails, we have rain, while if the dry phase prevails, we have a windstorm. When the outflowing wind from vaporization falls onto another cloud, the front of the stream is pushed back due to drag and narrowing of the passage. Thus, a cyclone or vortex is formed, with the gas stream moving diagonally in directions that do not encounter this resistance. The same happens for the rest of the stream, and thus eddies are created. As the wind cannot escape from the cloud, due to the density of the cloud, the gaseous stream of dry vapors, the air, moves in circles in places creating a greater density and therefore a drop in temperature. In the phenomena of hurricanes, we have stormy wind that is produced and cannot be released from the cloud. This is due to the resistance of the vortex forces and is manifested when the propeller descends to the ground and drags with it the cloud from which it cannot get rid. This creates a circular motion that when it hits the ground creates a negative pressure and overturns and violently lifts up everything it hits. If a large amount of thin air is compressed inside this cloud, then lightning occurs. Objects that have a high density and resist take damage, while those that have a lower density do not have time to be penetrated by the wind and take no damage. There is always wind before lightning. The place to be struck by lightning vibrates before the strike, because the wind which is the cause falls upon it first. Thus we cover the phenomena of thunder, lightning, windstorm, whirlwind, weather of fire or water, and hurricane, which are phenomena of the same nature. Know, 
Recap. In book three, we fully analyzed how fumes from flammable materials create celestial phenomena such as comets, meteors, shooting stars, etc. In book four, we saw how tides are created by the Earth periodically pulling or pushing the waters of the seas. Also in the same issue, we saw how plant juices are affected and moved by the moon and its phases, rising and falling periodically according to the period of the moon cycle. Apart from fumes from flammable materials which are highly volatile and are dry fumes by nature, air is also divided into dry and wet fumes having both phases potentially in it. Combined with the property of the Earth to inhale and exhale due to the pulsating electromagnetic field within that creates the atmospheric pressure, dry vapors are trapped either inside the Earth or in the air. Thus we have earthquakes, volcanoes, lightnings and thunders. The flow of these in the air causes the wind. Finally, we would say that all these phenomena are meteorological. Thus, we have completed the study on the separation of fumes into wet and dry and also what they cause. Dry fume cycle example. Ascending rays emerge from the Fuego volcano of Antigua, Guatemala. Here we will see how the dry fumes create windstorms, turn into thunder and lightning, enter due to low pressure and cyclonic effect into the volcano, where they find other underground fumes there. A saturation of them is created inside the earth and we have an explosion and escape of the fumes again back on the sky with these dry fumes becoming lightning again, this time upwards. During the eruption, there is a seismic vibration followed by the emission of the combustion gases from the volcano and then lava flow. So, we will see in an example the continuity of nature and the elements recapitulating everything we have said about these subjects. Here we have a composite example, where we can see all of this in total. We have a phenomenon where initially dry vapors of air are released from the cloud, and lining is created, creating a cyclone effect and low pressure where it occurs. The lining that has been created in the air by the decompression of the dry vapors Due to this low pressure and the cyclonic effect in the air, finds a passage in the mouth of the volcano as it moves down. The underground dry vapors of the subsoil within the volcano, due to their saturation, erupt, creating earthquake, and due to the negative pressure created, they are released from the bowels of the earth on the air, creating upward lightnings. They create explosions due to saturation inside the volcano, reaching high temperatures, melting elements of the subsoil and soil in the cavity where it was, while we have elimination of combustion gases on the air. So after the explosions, we have an appeal of these fumes. Then we have the flow of lava, the molten solid elements. In our example, due to the low pressure created by the cyclone, part of the dry vapors that escape from the volcano fall onto a denser cloud and erupt, causing earthquake, volcanic eruption, thunder and lightnings, which due to the low pressure but also the underground origin of these dry vapors have an upward course.
minerals. To complete the chapter on fumes, evaporations that we dealt with extensively in this documentary, we will also talk about the effects of evaporations inside the soil when they are confined in the bowels of the earth. There, therefore, two categories of bodies are produced, dust as in the surface of the earth, since we have the steamy as well as, as the smoky fumes, wet and dry. This is how mineral rocks and metallic cores are formed. Dry evaporation, having the effect of the element of fire, produces the mineral rocks such as various igneous rocks, red volcanic sulfur, minium, sulfur and other similar substances. Most of the minerals are colored dust, sand or stone, such as mercury, sulfide. The mineral rocks, as they have been formed, have spent all the dry vapors they had in them, and so they now only have the wet vapors in them. That's why they break or crumble and don't bend, don't glow from fire, and aren't penetrated by low frequencies, making them bad current conductors. All metallic cords are a product of steam liquid evaporation. They are cast or malleable such as iron, gold or copper. All these are produced by the wet vaporous vapor enclosed within the ground and within huge stones, where owing to dryness they condense into a single mass and coagulate. As it happens with the creation of dew on the surface of the earth, in the atmosphere, when they separate from the air, so it happens underground, only the metallic minerals are formed before the separation. Therefore, the metallic cores were potentially water, but they are not anymore, nor do they come from a qualitative change of the water. Due to chemical reactions with the condensation of the trapped vapor vapors inside the rock, we have a transformation of the rock into ore before the vapor vapor can liquefy. The metallic cores, after they were created, now contain only the dry vapors that remained, which is why they glow, melt and are penetrated by the low frequencies being good current conductors. The Earth, as we said, breathes in and out periodically. Also porous soils and even stones are permeable to air as well as water as we saw in the underground water cycle and the creation of springs in Book 3. The air has both a moist and dry nature, having dry and wet fumes. The changes that occur due to pressure and temperature inside the Earth in a rock cause chemical reactions that change its crystal structure inside it. Due to the different conditions of pressure and temperature, but also due to the different composition of the original rocks, we have a wide variety of metallic and stony minerals. So here it becomes clear how each evaporation affects the crystal structure, transforming either mineral rocks and crystals or metallic minerals. Connections and cycles. So we see what we initially mentioned, namely that minerals, gases, liquids or solids have in them two elements in pairs. They are one element, but another element is also potentially within them, while at the same time they came from a different one. Like, for example, a mineral rock in the past, before it became a mineral, it had all the elements in it as a rock. It was earth, land, and contained both wet, water, and dry, fire, vapors, fumes. As conditions prevailed over dry conditions, burning conditions and very high temperatures at high temperatures were created. This event caused the stone to melt, and once the temperatures dropped, it solidified it again, 
but this time with a different crystal structure. This new structure no longer has dry fumes inside. Thus we see that mineral rocks are elements of earth, land and water. As the opposite is also true for mineral metals. A rock before it became a mineral had dry and wet fumes. As the liquid vapors at some point prevailed and due to the pressure and temperature conditions we had their saturation. Just before the liquefaction of water vapor in the rock, chemical reactions take place in the presence of oxygen at appropriate temperatures and pressures. These reactions change the crystal structure of the rock, turning it into a metal. The new structure does not include the liquid vapors inside it, since they were spent in these chemical reactions. This is how metals of all kinds are created, which, since they have only dry fumes in them, are elements of earth, land and fire. We see all this recycling, but also the continuity of nature and materials, something that makes the world age, but also regenerate. A comet may have once been the cause of an earthquake, rocks on the surface of the earth may have been underground, a wind may have been lightened or caused the formation of mineral rocks, a rain may once have been moisture that created metals underground. Points that were found under the sea and points of the sea that were thrown up and became land. Places that had a tropical climate became frozen and frozen areas became warm. As any movement in the sublunar field is up and down, it appears that the changes occur in a circular motion. Our world is full of circles since the circle is a perfect shape. Let's not forget that the etheric field also moves in cycle. Wet and dry fume cycle. Dry vapors of flammable materials originating from the Earth's surface with the right conditions right towards the ionosphere and the superlunar area due to their very low density. There, after reaching an upper limit, they condense begin to fall and ignite, creating the celestial phenomenon. The air in the atmosphere consists of two types of vapors, the dry and the wet. In the troposphere, what causes rain and the water cycle, while dry causes the wind. Air and water. The liquid vapors, when they prevail, rain is caused. When dry vapors are trapped in liquid vapors, and escape violently due to pressure, they create a glow and a noise we call lightning and thunder. When dry vapors prevail in the atmosphere, wind is produced. When we have a large amount of dry vapors with a flow that has to pass through narrow passages of liquid vapors, we have a cyclonic effect and wind turbulence due to fluid mechanics. The Earth inhales and exhales periodically, causing the fumes either to rise from the soil and subsoil to the atmosphere or to descend from the atmosphere to the soil and subsoil. When the fumes go underground, they gather in pits of the ground and also inside the rocks. Mineral rocks are created because the dry vapors acted there and created chemical reactions in the interior of the rock, making the mineral rock. Metallic minerals are created because liquid vapors acted there and created other chemical reactions, turning the rock into a mineral metal. When the underground mixture of vapors, dry or wet, reaches a state of saturation, then it erupts and we have the creation of a seismic vibration. If the explosion was due to the dry fumes, then we have a huge heat wave and melting of the ground in the places around the explosion. Combustion gases are created which escape upwards first, followed by the molten materials. Everything comes out of a central outlet that is created, 
or that already existed, something we call a volcano and a volcanic eruption. If the explosion was due to liquid vapors, we have the creation of water and a violent attempt to escape from the underground. So after such an earthquake, we have a call of water to the surface from some chasm. Elements of sublunar plates. The noble gases, due to their low density, are found at the highest points of the ionosphere, being elements of fire and of course air. The reactive non-metals, being heavier with bigger density, are found in the lower layers of the atmosphere, but because of their reaction properties, they are elements of fire and air as well. The mineral rocks were created by the action of dry vapors, spending them completely as they were transformed from rock to mineral rock. Thus, they are now an element of land and water. Metals. Metals of all kinds, came from the action of liquid vapors, consuming them completely as they were transformed from rock into mineral metal. So now they are an element of land and fire. Thank you. 